your brother Larry Adine Kong saying happy Sunday and welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel even as I lead this fellowship of information and inspiration in the knowledge of God. So powered by the Pastor Larry Adine Kong Center for Education. <coughs> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on when people forget your work, God has a way of reminding them. Yeah, that's coming from Acts chapter 19, 1 through 7. Shall we pray together this morning? Our God and Father, we bless your name, O Lord. Give you praise for yet another Sunday, a day to worship you, a day to worship and fellowship with your people. Father, we just worship you. We bless you. We magnify your name, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Before we go in there, we ask lord and you help us and that which you do this morning in the name of jesus thank you father god in jesus mighty name we ask it amen and amen hallelujah acts 19 1 to 7 and, and it happened while apollos was at corinth that paul i won't pass through the upper regions came to ephesus and finding some disciples he said to them do you did you receive the holy spirit when you believed so they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? And they said, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John indeed baptized with baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come in after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. But when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and he spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now these men were about twelve in all. <clears throat> Okay, it says, um, remember that the last point we were was that Apollos now moved from Ephesus to Corinth. While he was there, it so happens that Paul, on, on this is circuit, on this is journey, he came to Ephesus from where he had departed earlier on and where um, Aquila and Priscilla still were. Okay, and finding some disciples, he says to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Now, he found some disciples who, did, who said they had not had so much as whether there is any Holy Spirit. <laughs> we see a number of things here. This was Ephesus, where Paul had been, and where he left um, Aquila and Priscilla. There were these believers who, though they were believers in Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection, they, they didn't have enough Christian education as to even hear about the Holy Spirit. In other words, the entire city of Ephesus had not yet been fully covered. Paul had been there. Mm, Aquila and Priscilla were there. They trained Apollos there. Still, they haven't covered everywhere. So we must, you know, bear that in mind that even when we are doing our work, certain places may be, we may be in our blind spots that we may not even notice. And it's good for us to pray from time to time, Lord, where else? What else? About what is in my blind spot? I want to make sure I cover every ground, you know, and God will guide you. Praise God. So that is number one. Number two, he said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Or since you believe. In other words, there are some people who, who believe but not yet receive the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul asked that question. Paul knew that there were some people, they didn't receive the Holy Spirit at the time of their conversion or their being, becoming born again. It's very possible to become born again and yet not have the Holy Spirit, you know, upon you or baptized you. That's why I said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe or at the time you believed? In other words, some people actually give their life to Christ. They get born again, but they don't get the Holy Spirit at that same time. Yeah, it happens. And it takes some people some time in between the two, actually, before the Spirit of God will come. So Paul was asking that question. From there, we learn that it's possible that some people may be born again without yet the Holy Spirit. But they now said, we haven't even so much as had whether there's any Holy Spirit. Oh, and then into what then were you baptized? Paul didn't go on saying, oh no, oh no. You mean people like you still exist? <laughs> you know, he didn't say anything like that. He said, oh, I really, I, this is interesting, okay? Into what then were you baptized? Trying to find out their background so that he would know the way to help them. The way to help people find out the background, find out where they're coming from, get to the root of it, and then you are able to help people as much as, as, much as you can. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so, um, they, when they answered him, they said, into John's baptism. Oh, now... Paul now began to talk about the baptism of repentance. We're going to come back to that. What it means is this, that John and his disciples managed to lead some people to Christ. Yeah, it means that John, at a point in time, John died. We know the story of how John died. And his disciples, they managed to lead people to Christ. They managed to lead them to the Christ who was about to die 
okay, and who will rise again. They managed to lead people to Christ, even though they were disciples of John the Baptist. Their work, they were able to lead people to Christ, not in the uh, perfect way, but they knew up to their own level. Remember the story of Apollos. That's the background story that we read, you know. Apollos knew only up to the baptism of John. All right. Now, these people who were into the baptism of John were actually able to lead people a bit further, lead them to Christ, even though they didn't have better Christian education. And at that point in time, this, this, the, um, baptism, the ministry of John and his disciples that he left behind, it was as if they were being phased out and nobody was remembering them anymore. But God arranged for this thing to happen so that they could be remembered. That's what happened. You know, there are times in ministry, some people, they will do some very big work and nobody notices them. Nobody remembers them. But God has a way of arranging so that people are going to remember them and people are going to honor them in due season. Praise God. Another thing I see from here is that some people, look at these people, all they were doing, they still were around. They were leading people to Christ. Not in a not the way John would do, not the way Peter would do, not the way Philip would do, and all that. But the way they knew from following John, they did that little, you know, that little bit. Praise God. Now, so also we have it today. Some people are involved in some ministries that are kind of hidden. People do not notice and do not appreciate. And I'm saying we appreciate you today, and God will appreciate you on our behalf better than we can do in Jesus' mighty name. I met somebody who is involved in youth work. When I saw what these people do, I, res I said to myself, wow, wow, wow. Well, when we get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of surprises. These people are not known at all. But the kind of work they have done for our youth, in our youth, around our youth, of, you know, um, is so amazing. So amazing. And they, they, their work is, um, is complex, is difficult, is uh, complicated. That it's not as simple the way we come on the bridge and just preach. Their own is a lot, lot more technical, you know, than that. And I'm like, wow. And now, you know, some of us are known, they are big names and call us all kinds of titles and things. These guys, nobody knows them. They are just, they are even working with youth. Some of the youth that they are training will even go up to become big pastors, big name pastors, totally forgetting where they came from. Yeah, but God knows you and God will reward you in Jesus. I met another set of people, they are working on people into drug. You know, this drug that is trying to rehabilitate them and nobody knows their name. Their ministry is not glamorous. You know, they don't bear all the titles in the world and they are not, they are not buying airplanes and stuff, you know. But God sees your work and God will reward you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like these disciples of John the Baptist, they were failing and nobody knew them anymore. God, but God made sure that Paul came across people that will make Paul remember that some people still exist called the disciples of John the Baptist. Amen. God will arrange something like that for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's go on. Paul now went on saying, Oh, indeed, that is the baptism of John, otherwise called the baptism of repentance. Okay? And then he said all that, and then he went on to talk about Jesus Christ. When they had this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and he spoke with new tongues and prophesied. What am I saying? That we have three baptisms being described there. The baptism of John, otherwise called the baptism of repentance. Baptism in the name of Jesus, which is what the water baptism that Christians do. That of John also is a water baptism, but it's unto repentance, preparatory towards what Jesus was coming for. That of the Christian is the one they needed at this point in time. So they were baptized in the name of Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So three baptisms show there. That's the fourth one that we may not necessarily mention here. Some people call it the baptism. Um, no, 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 no. I can mention that one. That's a baptism into the body of Christ. Yeah, that's another one. That's baptism into the way it is like um, there's a building going on and the blocks are being laid. And when you get born again, it's like a space is made for you in the block work and you are inserted. That's baptism into the body of Christ. It happens instantaneously at the time of salvation. So the one I was saying that we may not mention here, because it's not so necessary here, is what some people call the baptism of suffering. Where Jesus was saying, are you ready to be baptized with the baptism? I will go through something like that. But 
We don't need that for basic stuff. <laughs> Praise the Lord forevermore. And then they finally, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They spoke with tongues and prophesied. Again, each time they talk about the Spirit of God coming upon people, speaking in tongues always follow. So that's why we keep saying the speaking in tongues is the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Any time in the Bible they speak about, you know, speak, I mean, laying hands, the Holy Spirit came upon them, speaking in tongues would typically follow. Yeah, so it has happened here as well. And the people were about 12. That's what the Bible says. So we learn from there that it's, uh, it's indeed the initial evidence of uh, be receiving the Spirit of God. So you may be born again, but not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit. You will be baptized in the Holy Spirit because it's a game changer. I can assure you of that. If you have not yet received him, look around, ask people questions around, and you are going to get it. So let me now say to Nigerians, congratulations. Uh, on the October 1, you can see I'm celebrating with you in green and white by the grace of God this morning. And uh, it looks really funny at this point in time. Talk about perplexity of nations. Have you heard it before? Yes, it's in the Bible. But I can say to you that what we see now is not the end of the story in Jesus' mighty name. God loves this nation. It has been predicted several times that this nation will, will scatter, this nation will break and all that. And through all the predictions, God has proven that there's nothing like that. So those who think they own this place, God will show them that indeed he is the, yeah, how does the Bible put it again now? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He's the one who intervenes in the affairs of men and he will intervene in our affairs. I wish you a good celebration in spite of the way it is. Be proud of your country. Pray still. Expect the best for this country. Thank you very much and God bless you.